In today's video, I'm going to show you the best export settings in Adobe Premiere Pro. H.264, H.265, QuickTime, Apple ProRes, ProRes, MXF, DNX, WMV, MP4. Why is this so complicated? Why can't I just export, save my video, get it online and wait for people to see my YouTube video? Why is it so complicated to export in Adobe Premiere Pro? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you the number one export setting that you should be using to get your video from Premiere to YouTube. So we're going to jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and this is your project. So this is our complete project in Adobe Premiere Pro. And if we wanted to export this, all we need to do is go up to file on the top bar, go down to export media. Now in this export settings tab, we have all of these different settings, but we're just going to start off with the format. And I'm just going to adjust this to H.265. This is a format that I would recommend using, but I'm just going to go back into this format option and have a look at a few options. DNX HR is a TV approved video format, but it is way too high quality for YouTube. If you export this four second video, then that's gonna be about 500 megabytes, which is complete overkill for YouTube. H.264 used to be the go-to for all internet video, but it's an old codec that has been replaced with HEVC, which is H.265, and that's what we're going to use today. And then lastly, we also have QuickTime, and QuickTime is also a TV approved format, but don't worry about that today because we're gonna be using HEVC, which is H.265. The reason why this format is really good for internet upload is because it keeps the video quality, but it compresses the file size, meaning you're not going to have a massive video to upload to the internet, but you're also going to have a really clear image. So once you've selected H.265, you can go and change your output name and your destination. You can change the width and the height of the video. This is your frame size, but if you're shooting in 1080, then I would seriously recommend keeping this to 1920 by 1080. You can change your frame rates. You can change your aspect ratio. I would select render at maximum depth and select use maximum render quality. And then here in the bitrate encoding, I would change this to CBR and I would pull the target bitrate up to the very top. And then in quality, I would suggest selecting highest. Now, if you see, if I pull down on this bar, that's the target bitrate bar, you'll see the estimated file size at the lowest is 268 kilobytes. Now, if I pull this all the way up to the very top, that's 20. The estimated file size is 10 megabits. So it's really important to know that if you have this bar pushed all the way to the left, your video quality will be minimum, but your file size will also be minimum. And then if we pull the slider across to the right as well, you'll also know that your quality is going to be amazing, but your file size will be slightly larger. So it's up to you as a creator to find the perfect balance between quality and file size. Now, if we go across to the audio tab, we just want to make sure that our audio format settings are set to AAC. And then you want to make sure that your sample rate is 48,000 Hertz and then everything else is completely fine. So from here, all you would need to do is go down to the big export button and export your video. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, push that bell icon. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.